pull out the time-out card so it's tucked in my palm and hand it to Miss, standing up as I do so. Sit down. I've got a time-out card. I say this almost under my breath. It's not a state secret, but my parents seem to think life will be easier if my autism is on a need-to-know basis. I'm not sure it works, but nobody bothered to ask me. So the teachers know, and most of my friends, but... I don't care what you've got, young lady. Miss looks down at the card again, and back at me. She's got a sort of wart thing on her forehead, and there's a speck of mascara on her cheek. You're not leaving my class. I can't wait for school to start so we can get a break from rascal, says Violet. Me too, grumbles Luke. Don't talk about school. I cover my ears. I never want summer to end. I like to stay home in my nightgown instead of getting dressed for school. It's a winter nightgown, says Violet. And it's inside out, says Luke. And it's backwards, says Violet. So what? I say. So now that you turned six, you need to stop acting like such a baby. The whispers stopped, making her ears ring, and plunged April into a deafening stillness that reverberated off the rafters. Then, as if drowning in the silence and pain, it threatened to rip at her insides again. Her heart thudded erratically. Faster and faster, it pounded, fit to burst from her ribcage. Her breathing grew heavy. The churning pain in the pit of her stomach leapt to her chest. She tried desperately not to panic as the inexplicable feeling pumped through her veins. April's eyes wandered the room looking for a logical cause, her gaze intent on the dark corner. There are six things very wrong with my life. One, I have one of those under-the-skin spots that will never come to a head but lurk in a red way for the next two years. Two, it is on my nose. Three, I have a three-year-old sister who may have peed somewhere in my room. Four, in 14 days the summer holes will be over and then it will be back to Stalag 14 and Oberfuhrer Frau Simpson and her bunch of sadistic teachers. Five, I am very ugly and need to go into an ugly home. Six, I went to a party dressed as a stuffed olive. Some two dozen metabolisms round this table were getting a jolly good jolt, I thought, as the meal went on and on. Soup, fish, pheasant, beefsteak, asparagus, pudding, savoury, fruit. Hampton food, Aunt Sadie used to call it, and indeed it had a character of its own which can best be described by saying that it was like mountains of the very most delicious imaginable nursery food. Plain and wholesome, made of first-class materials, each thing tasting strongly of itself. But, like everything else at Hampton, it was exaggerated. Just as Lady Montdor was a little bit too much like a countess, Lord Montdor too much like an elder statesman, the servants too perfect and too deferential, the beds too soft and the linen too fine, the motor-cars too new and too shiny, and everything too much in apple-pie order, so the very peaches there were too peach-like. Funny rock you have in the meadow, half-bacon. Who drilled the hole in it? It is the stone of Gronu, said Hugh. Oh, what's that when it's at home, eh? <laughs> there is a man being killed at that place, said Hugh. Old time. Was there now? Yes, said Hugh. He has been taking the other man's wife. 